Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. MTG Box Analysis here to take a look at Wilds of Eldraine in the draft booster box form. We've got a fully sealed and intact box here. We're gonna go ahead and crack it open, put the value of all the rares, mythics, and any card valued over a buck on the screen, and then we'll jump right into the MTG Box Analysis. So let's sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, so this box contains a little insert here. Nothing really special about it, but here's the special part. We've got 36 packs. They cover the Wild of Eldraine main set, plus we have the Enchanting Tales subset, which is a set of 63 enchantments reprinted uh, in a special frame. So uh, that's where the money really is for this set. So let's see if we can find some of it. Pack number one, uh, we do have pull tabs, so we'll go ahead and use those for the video. We'll go through about three or four packs um, pretty slow, and then we'll speed things up. All right, so we got ourselves a Wicked and Cursed token here, followed by a Plains. And then we are going to see a Candy Trail foil coming in, plus an Impact Tremors from the Enchanting Tales, with a Gruff Triplets coming in from the main set. Then we got a Spellcorn Coven. A belligerent of the Ball with an Ice Rot Sentry, Moment of Valor, followed by a Fell Horseman. Then we got a Ferocious Werefox with a Grabby Giant. And then we're going to see ourselves a Leaping Ambush with a Freeze in Place and a Rav Out, plus a Tunaville Guide. All right, so that's pack number one down. Let's go ahead and slide into pack number two here. Uh, pack number one, not the best pack number one we've ever seen. All right, we got ourselves a Beast Token plus a Swamp. And behind that, we're going to see ourselves a Raid Bombardment with a Restless Vinestalk coming in as our rare from the main set. Then we've got an Edgewall Inn, followed by a Solitary Sanctuary, Witch Stalker Frenzy. Then we're going to see an Armory Mice with a Ginger Brute. Then we've got a Slumbering Keep Guard with a Witch's Mark, followed by a Territorial Witch Stalker, a Bellowing Bruiser, and a Wicked Visitor with a Snare Master Sprite and a Misleading Motes in the back. All right, not a ton of value yet, but as I said, there uh, there is quite a bit of value in this set. Um, so we got ourselves a non-token token, followed by a mountain. Then we're going to see ourselves a Utopia Sprawl with a Song of Totenas coming as our main set rare, with a Callous Cell Sword, Succumb to the Cold. Then we're going to see a Gingerbread Hunter, a Ginger Brute, a Frostbridge Guard, a Fell Horseman. Then we've got a Bastille Bloodline, Frantic Firebolt, Root Rider Fawn, followed by a Rat Out. Then we've got a Stormkeld Prowler with a Return Triumphant in the back. All right, just made a quick adjustment to the focus. Hopefully that'll be a little bit better. Apologies for the, uh, the cut. Um, got another non-token token here, followed by a Plains. And then we're going to see, whoa, a doubling season coming in from the Enchanting Tales subset. This is going to be a tremendous hit for us. Uh, one of the most valuable mythics that you can pull. And behind that, we're going to see ourselves a Likeness Looter from the main set with a Picnic Ruiner, a Hearth Elemental. Then we're going to see a Dutiful Griffin with a Stockpiling Celebrant, a Harried Spear Guard, an Unruly Catapult, some Spider Food, followed by a Bellowing Bruiser and a Shatter the Oath. Then we get a Diminisher Witch with a Feed the Cauldron and a Freeze in Place. All right, that was a good pack. Now let's see a few more like it. All right, this one is going to kick off with a Knight Token, followed by a Standard Island. Then we've got a, a Toadstool Admirer coming in in foil hiding back there with a Spreading Seas. And we're going to see ourselves a Questing Druid in the Showcase frame. This should hold a little bit of value for us. With a Solitary Sanctuary, Totena's Swarm Piper, Witch Stalker Frenzy. Then we get a Bespotted Knight with a Merfolk Coral Smith, a Candy Trail. And then we're going to see a Territorial Witch Stalker with a Merry Bards, Conceited Witch, and a Cooped Up with a Misleading Moats in the back. All right, sliding into our next pack. Really glad that we got the doubling season up front. Uh, hopefully that means this is going to be a good box. So we got some food, followed by a planes. Then we're going to see ourselves a ground seal with a spellbook vendor coming in as our main set rare. Then we're going to see ourselves a dream spoilers, Ashiok's Reaper, Cursed Courtier, Kellen Lightblades, Evolving Wilds, with a hopeful vigil, Troublemaker Oof, then we got ourselves a Minecart Daredevil with a Verdant Outrider with a Sugar Rush. Then we've got an Into Fay Court with a Borrow Naughty in the back. All right. I think we've gone through enough of the commons. Let's go ahead and speed things up uh, with this pack. So we've got ourselves another food token here with a, an island. Then we're going to see an Intangible Virtue. Then we're going to see a Questing Druid, this time in Non Showcase, with a Two-Headed Hunter 
Then we've got ourselves an Ego Drain, Shrouded Shepherd. All right. That wasn't so bad of a pack. Nice to see a Question Druid. Um, that is one of, I would say, the good cards from this set. All right. We've got ourselves another non token token with a Swamp. Then we're going to see ourselves a Galvanic Giant in foil with a Fraying Sanity Rare. Then we've got a Spiteful Hex Mage with a Stone Splitter Bolt, a Gadwick's First Duel, and a Twisted Sewer Witch. If you're interested in seeing the full inventory uh, without putting it on 1x speed, you can always download the MTG box analysis. All right, this one's got a mountain, followed by a foil restless vine stalk as our first rare. So we're going to see three. Then we're going to see ourselves a hardened scales with a feral encounter coming in. Um, right behind that, we're going to see a discerning financier with a howling galefang and an Imu Dane's recruiter. All right, our next pack starts off with a monster sorcerer token. And behind that, we're going to see ourselves Beautiful Island. Then we're going to see a Compulsion with a Horn Locked Whale as our rare Soul Guide Lantern, followed by Back for Seconds. Then we're going to see ourselves a Glass Casket. All right. Hoping for another big hit coming up uh, soon. It's been a little while since our doubling season. So we got some food for growth with a forest. Then we've got a Dragon Mantle, followed by Lord Skitter's Blessing, coming in as our rare, with another Edgewall in. Then we're going to see a Royal Treatment, followed by High Fae Negotiator. All right. Um, and I am skipping the commons in this box opening uh, from a reading them aloud, because there are no commons valued over a buck. So we've got the Rat, followed by a Swamp. Then we're going to see ourselves a Stab Wound, with a Farsight Ritual, coming in as our rare with a Collector's Vault and an Up the Beanstalk. There's an Uncommon valued over a buck. Then we're going to see a Galvanic Giant non-foil this time. And let me just double check and see if, if we're still only at one Mythic. Yep, we are only at uh, one Mythic and a bunch of uh, light, lightly played uh, rares there. Let's check the Enchanting Tale subset. Yeah, wow. All right, 12 packs, only a single Mythic in the box. Um, I'm expecting to see at least five, maybe seven, maybe ten uh, in this box. So we got ourselves some food with another island. Then we're going to see an oppression coming on from the Enchanting Tales with an Expel the Interlopers, a two-headed hunter. Then we've got Greta Sweet Tooth Scourge with a Fairy Fencing. All right, no mythics in that pack. Uh, will this be the pack that we see our second mythic? Who knows? All right, so this one kicks off with a beast token, followed by a plains. Then we're going to see ourselves Corval and the Noble Thief in foil with a prismatic omen coming in from the Enchanting Tales with a restless bivouac, another land rare, followed by a discerning financier, Ash the Party Crasher, and uh, back for seconds. Come on, there we go. Pull tabs. Sometimes, sometimes they're great. Sometimes not so great. All right, uh, more food, different frame with uh, that island again, and then we're going to see spreading seas with rotisserie elemental, and then we're going to see the royal treatment with O'Brien dreaming duelist and a cursed courtier. This one is going to kick off with a Wicked Cursed. And then we're going to see ourselves a forest with a Fiery Emancipation coming in. Nice artwork. Followed by a Raging Battle Mouse with an Eerie Interference, Neva Stalked by Nightmares, and the Ash the Party Crasher. This pack is going to kick off with an On an Adventure. And then we're going to see ourselves an island with a Dark Tutelage, followed by Realm Scorcher Hellkite. Finally, our second mythic of the box. Unfortunately, not high value. Then we're going to see ourselves a Graceful Takedown coming in as our first uncommon. Picklock Prankster, another uncommon valued over a buck. Uh, and then we're going to see a Gallant Pie Wielder. All right, there we go. Now I got my piles cleaned up. 
Let's move into our next pack here. This one's going to start off with a treasure token. And then we're going to see uh, the full art forest with a curiosity and a pollen sheared hair coming in the showcase treatment with a twisted fealty, O'Brien dreaming duelist, and an archive dragon. All right, not the best pack uh, for the middle of the box. I think we're probably right at the halfway point. So we got ourselves another adventure here with a swamp. And behind that, we're going to see a season of growth. Followed by Italian's Messenger, Emberith Veteran, uh, Shari Numbing Depths, and a Cheeky House Mouse. We've got ourselves a, another Monster Sorcerer token here, followed by a Mountain. And then we're going to see ourselves a Foil Forest with a Nature's Will coming in from the Enchanting Tales and a Bramble Familiar. Then a Woodland Acolyte. Troyan Gutsy Explorer, and welcome to Sweet Tooth. All right, sliding into our next pack here, we are going to see ourselves a food token, followed by a Plains. Then we're going to get a Verdant Outrider and a Vampiric Rites. Then we're going to see the Goose Mother, the mother of uh, the doubling season. Then we've got a Monstrous Rage with an Aredi's Tempting Apple and... Yeah, the uh, Monstrous Rage is valued over a dollar, so we'll just separate that. Then we got a Chancellor of Tales with a Warehouse Tabby. So there are a total of four uncommons valued over a buck. We've seen three. Uh, hopefully we get all four. So we got ourselves a rat with a mountain. And then we're going to see ourselves a foil mana flare coming in. And then we're going to see a Grasp of Fate with a Werefox Bodyguard. Then a Temptest Heart with a Boundary Lands Ranger and a Gingerbread Hunter. All right, getting close to the end of stack number two, still sitting at two, two Mythics, unless I've missed one. Um, this one's gonna start off with a Nightmare token. Hopefully that's not the scenario for the box. Then we get ourselves an Island, followed by a Hatching Plans and a Twinning Twins Rare. Kala Sellsword with a Splashy Spellcaster, Frolicking Familiar, This one's got a food token, followed by a swamp, and then we're going to see ourselves a Restless Aspire Foil Borderless coming in. Very nice from the land cycle. Then we get a Ley Line of Anticipation, second rare of the pack, and we're going to see an Imodane, the Pyro Hammer, as our third rare. Then a Corval, the Noble Thief, Johan, the Apprentice, Bitter Chill, and that'll do it. Got ourselves a cute little mouse token here, followed by a mountain, then a mana flare rare, followed by Rowan Sign of War, another mythic for us. Hooray, we're finally at three. Uh, then we get a Ruby Daring Tracker, Agatha's Champion, and a Stroke of Midnight, which is our fourth and final uh, uncommon valued over a buck. All right, another non-token token here, followed by a full art swamp and a ground seal. And then we're going to see ourselves an, a tale for the ages with a collector's vault, Emberith veteran, and a glass casket. All right, next up, we've got ourselves a wicked cursed with another island. And then we're going to see ourselves a griffin airy. And an Elvish Archivist coming in as our rare with a Red Tooth Vanguard, Dutiful Griffin, and a Lord Skitter's Butcher. Wow, lots of non token tokens in this set. Uh, we got ourselves a Plains, followed by a Candy Grapple Foil, then a Compulsion. And the end coming in as our rare with a tough cookie and a storm killed vanguard and a tenacious tome seeker. Getting pretty close to the end of the box, and I'm getting pretty nervous for the value of this box. So we got the food followed by the swamp. Then we're going to see ourselves a dragon mantle with a bramble familiar, another showcase rare. 
uh, Disdainful Stroke, Tattered Ratter, and The Witch's Vanity. All right, this pack is going to start off with, yet again, another food token. There's plenty of those in this set. Um, we're going to then see ourselves a mountain with a Kindred Discovery Mythic coming in from the Enchanting Tales subset. That should hold some value for us. And then we're going to see the Iron Crag uh, rare, three bowls of porridge, and the Princess Takes Flight with Taken by Nightmares. We're almost at the end of the box. Uh, just a quick poll question. Uh, what do you all think of Wilds of Eldraine? Is it still a set uh, that you want to crack open and play? Or is it a set that you've already forgotten about? So we've got a rat followed by a forest. Then we're going to see ourselves a Utopia Sprawl with another mythic Balloon Grand Squall. Not high value, though. Then we're going to see ourselves a Threadbind Clique. Um, nope. No, that's not over a dollar. Then Sir Armand and Succumb to the Cold. The uh, cards are sticking at the top there, so I'm just going to crack this one up in the uh, traditional way. Not sure uh, why there's, they're poking up there at the top, but let me fix that. All right, we got ourselves a Wicked Cursed with a Mountain. Then we're going to see ourselves a Karmic Justice coming in with an Archon of the Wild Rose. Then we're going to see ourselves an Ego Drain with a Hearth Elemental and a Knight of Doves. Yeah, this one's doing it too. I guess this is how they sat in the, in the box. So we got a Treasure, followed by a Plains. Then we're going to see ourselves a Foil Edgewall Inn and a Knightly Valor with Redcap Gutter Dweller, okay, Dream Spoilers, Fairy Dream Thief, and Agatha's Champion. All right, getting pretty close to the end here. Don't know if we're going to see our value back in this box. So we got ourselves a treasure, followed by a forest, and then we're going to see Garuk's Uprising, an elusive otter, then a stone splitter bolt, Knight of Sweet's Revenge, and a twisted sewer witch. Second to last pack, we've got ourselves a royal young hero with a plains. Then we're going to see ourselves protective parents, followed by intangible virtue. Then we've got Agatha of the Vile Cauldron, not Agatha's Soul Cauldron, uh, but another mythic. Then a picnic ruiner, Totena's Swarmpiper, and Shari of Numbing Depths. All right, final draft booster pack, then we'll jump into the MTG box analysis. This one is going to start off with a Wicked Cursed, followed by a Forest. Then we're going to see ourselves a Rest in Peace and a Sentinel of the Lost Lore. All right, uh, and then we're going to see a Tanglespan Lookout with an Ice Rot Sentry, an Ashiox Reaper, Charmed Clothier, Harried Spear Guard, Archon's Glory, Titanic Growth, Kindred Heroism, followed by a Sky Beast Tracker, a Reddy's Whisper, and a Freeze in Place, and a Wicked Visitor. All right, so I'll get all of this cleaned up, sorted, organized, priced, and be right back with the MTG box analysis. Let's get things started by reviewing the contents of the box. Using this chart, we can see the cards that we were eligible to see shaded in gray, the non-foils we actually saw in green, and the foils in orange. In the non-foil space, we saw between 78 and 86 cards for each of the colors of magic, plus three showcase and 36 cards from the Enchanting Tales subset. In the foil space, we saw at least one card for each color in standard frame, along with one foil borderless and one foil Enchanting Tales card. Unfortunately, we did not see any of the anime borderless in today's box. Moving into coverage, in the non-foil space, we saw 232 unique cards from the 307 cards we were eligible to obtain from the main set. This gave us 76% coverage. From the Enchanted Tales subset, we saw 30 unique non-foil cards out of a possible 83, giving us 36% coverage. In the foil space, we saw just 11 of the 307 cards we were eligible to pull from the main set, giving us 4% coverage. And seeing one card from the Enchanted Tales subset gave us just over 1% coverage. 
Pivoting to coverage by rarity, in today's box we saw 100% of the commons and uncommons that we were eligible to see in non-foil from the main set. We also saw 32 of the 78 rares for 41% coverage, and 4 non-foil mythics for 12% coverage. In the foil space, we saw 5% of the commons and 4% of the uncommons, along with 2 foil rares good enough for 3% coverage. From the Enchanting Tale subset, we saw 100% of the uncommons in non-foil, along with 10 of the 35 rares for 29% coverage and 2 mythics for 7% coverage. And because we only saw one foil, our total coverage of the rares was 3%. In the end, this box contained 45 rares and 6 mythics when combining the two sets. From a duplication standpoint, this box was about average for a draft booster. It contained 150 cards repeated 266 times for a box duplication rate of 49% with 12 play sets of common cards. Before getting into the value of today's draft booster box, let's take a look at the current value of the set. This chart displays all 390 cards that you can pull out of a draft booster pack using non-foil market prices as of March 15th, 2024. Currently, the set contains 27 cards valued over $10. There are 7 from the main set, with Agatha's Soul Cauldron being in the top spot at $42.24. From the Enchanting Tales subset, there are a total of 20 cards, 8 coming in standard frame and 12 in the anime borderless, with the Ristic Study being in the top spot for both frames. The two sets also contain 10 cards valued between $5 and $10, and 47 cards in the $1 to $5 range. The other 306 cards in the set are currently valued under a dollar. A full set of all 307 main set cards has a market value of $229.88, and the 83 cards from the Enchanting Tales subset have a market value of $683.76, giving the Wilds of Eldraine a total market value of $913.64 as a set. Now let's recap the actual observed value that we saw in today's box, starting off with a look at the non-foils. We ended up only seeing one of the 27 non-foil cards valued over $10, but it was a really good hit. We saw the standard printing of the doubling season valued at $40.55. We also only saw one card valued between $5 and $10, which was the Kindred Discovery. We picked up 11 cards valued between $1 and $5, but the other 515 non-foils in the box were valued under $1. In the foil space, only two of our cards were valued over a dollar. The other 10 foils in the box are valued under a buck. So how did this box perform? Well, the market price for this box as of March 15th, 2024 is $97.76. The Wilds of Eldrain Draft Booster Box contains 36 packs, each with 15 cards, allowing you to see 540 cards plus tokens. The current market value of the 37 cards that we saw from the Enchanting Tales subset was $63.40. The 31 tokens and 37 basic lands are valued at $13.47 combined. The 316 commons that we saw have a combined value of $12.06, and the 112 uncommons are valued at $13.13. .13. Now, the 34 rares that we saw from the main set have a combined value of $14.74, and the 4 mythics are valued at $2.10. Add it all up and the grand total for this box comes up to be $118.90 in card market value, which is $21.14 over the market price for the box, and means that this box returned 122% of the market price in card value. However, in cards valued just over $2, the box looks like this. We saw just 7 cards valued over 2 bucks in this box, and they have a current combined value of $60.62, which means that those 7 cards only represent 62% of the market price for the box. This set has a ton of potential. Unfortunately, we only saw one great card in this box, and it wasn't enough to save it. Maybe the next box will make up for it. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, do something amazing. Get early access to videos, download the analysis for every box open on the channel, and personally DM me, just like these fine people. All by becoming a member of the channel through YouTube or over at mtgboxanalysis.com. You'll find links in the description. Until next time, do something amazing.